Wim, who I believe is in Scandinavia somewhere, though I don't have the, uh, the what is he in Sweden? I forget. Maybe I've got another one by him and I can tell then. He says, that is a nominal Christian, somebody who believes or believed in God, Jesus, and or that Jesus is God, unless they convert. Let's say you were riding on a bus that was filled with most every sort of believer and non-believer uh, that w- affor- unfortunately was then and there hijacked by Islamic terrorists. They drive everybody to their hideout, and after many hours of fruitless negotiation and trying to obtain a hostage release, their leader decides to execute a Christian to press a point. They randomly select a victim who says he's a Mormon and before the blade can drop you stand up and say, now wait a minute that guy's not a Christian. They don't believe in the resurrection of Christ as being the only way to salvation. The the terrorists stop, look at each other and decide to go out and pick someone else. They randomly select another victim who says he's an atheist now after being brought up as a fundamentalist Baptist in his youth. The rogues look toward their leader for advice, and he decides the victim still qualifies as a nominal Christian. Immediately, you stand up and plead for a proper reconsideration. Uh, Haven't these scoundrels ever been to Williamson County before? So they stop and decide to try to find somebody else who's a little bit more optimum uh, here for Pete's sake. They randomly select another victim who says he's a convert to Hinduism after burning out as a Jehovah's Witness. But now the leader says, Regrettably, the fatwa doesn't cover this converted guy. You catch a, you catch a break because you didn't have to stand up and complain again, but now they're staring at you. Hmm. That is a fascinating scenario. And well put. Uh, sure, appreciate that. When, like, what would be enough? Because uh, the Muslim extremists seem to see all uh, Westerners as Christians, unless they're Jews, which is even worse in their eyes, right? Now, please don't go uh, saying I'm an Islamophobe or some nonsense like that. But let's live in the real world and admit that there are Islamists, uh, Islamic extremists, right? Let's let's remember that word extremists. That is not to paint all Muslims with that color, with that brush, right? Just uh, as Saeed Hossein Nasser, the great Sufi scholar, says, it's about 10% of Muslims who are jihadis or sim- sympathizers. Of course, since there's over a billion Muslims, what does that work out to a mere oh, 100 million of them? Uh, another question is going to bring that up later if not today uh but uh so it's a real threat but let no one say that all muslims are fanatics and extremists i certainly do not think or say that right let's just uh bring ourselves to to reality here there certainly are lunatics such as you describe and uh and you see you got the same question about them are they real or nominal Muslims? Or let's say some fanatical Muslim would look at uh, some peaceful Sufi who's happy to let anybody uh, thrive with their religion and is glad to admit that the different religions can be paths to God as one treads that one's path, wherever it begins, into the mystical heart of all religions, the gnosis Sufis are sort of Gnostics. And uh, w- would some uh, jihadist look at a Sufi, and yet I, I know there are some Sufi jihadists, I don't quite know how that works, but anyway, let's just think, look at this guy, he's not a jihadi, well then he's no real Muslim. And there are, like the Wahhabi sect uh, says that uh, if you have right beliefs on other things, but you're not a Wahhabi Muslim, you don't count as a Muslim, so it's open season on you. Uh, I'm not exaggerating. Who's a Muslim? What does it take to uh, count as a Muslim? Same thing appears uh, in Christianity. And probably, oh, I know it does in Judaism, right? Uh, Well, you may think you're a Jew, my friend, but I believe you go to that Reform synagogue. Nah, nah, you you don't count. Uh, And you're about as much of a Jew as a Palestinian who's an Israeli citizen. You're not a Jew in the, the, the true religious sense. Everybody's got that problem. Uh, So how do you decide it? This is the old question that um, 
historians of religion have raised for a long time, what is the true form of religion? And I guess you can't really go much beyond what Wilfred Cantwell Smith says in his book, The Meaning and End of Religion, where he says, uh, y- you can't be that precise when you use a religious tag. You're, you're really conceptually drawing an oval or an ellipse centered, quote unquote, about two foci or focal points. There's the the evolving beliefs of the religion, so that a Muslim or Christian or whatever would be expected to have certain beliefs depending on the era in which they, they lived. So the the, uh, the doctrines officially that's one focal point, but the other is the uh, the community of people throughout the ages and through the world who regard themselves as members of this religion. It's not an it's not a category you can easily say um, this person is in or out of. It's another version of the ideal type approach. Uh, where you say, well, let's think of dying and rising gods or divine men, avatars, or uh, or religions, period. Uh, what counts as one? Well, there's certainly uh, not a whole lot of identical instances, uh, but there are a lot of phenomena that bear many traits in common, though they may have just as many uh, and more significant differences like, uh, well, would you say a religion is a system of belief that involves a god? Well, sure, would, or or gods? Well, sure would seem like that, but then there's uh, Jainism and Mahayana Buddhism, uh, I'm sorry, Theravada Buddhism, where there really are not any gods exactly. But look, they've got so much else in common. Well, what you do is you, you say uh, uh, that let's we make a paradigm, an ideal type. We take what the the uh, the features that the phenomena I have in common uh, spirituality ritual sacrifice prayer belief in an afterlife and all that and uh, let's say that most of them have in common including theism and then uh, you you come up with a kind of a textbook definition and you see where based uh, so you categorize them together based on what they have in common but you notice that they don't have everything in common but you use what you do have in common as a kind of a measuring rod uh, to uh, measure the anomalies against well now why does theravada buddhism not have a god concept when everybody else seems to there's got to be some good reason for that and if in fact of course there is it becomes obvious pretty quickly as to how they came to that and what they mean by it and the difference it makes it doesn't mean it's not a religion it's just that once you understand the basic type it it casts further light on what is anomalous what is unique and distinct about a religion same thing, the idea of the dying and rising gods. Is it big news that uh, the stories of Baal and Osiris and Attis and Jesus and Hercules do not fit in every detail so that they're all just alike, uh, like Superman and Captain Marvel and the Martian Manhunter, are all essentially the same character? No, there's significant differences too, but you got to ask, given that they're so similar on so many points, why do they differ here? Ah, to avoid copyright infringement, perhaps, and so on. Uh, And uh, that's kind of what's going on here when you ask, well, who is a real Christian versus a nominal Christian? I like the example you mentioned with the Mormons. That's a big issue, uh, right? Uh, Well, it's been a big issue ever since they've been around. Well, yeah, they do say they believe in Jesus Christ and that he's the son of God. He died and rose. He's the savior. Yeah, there's an awful lot that's familiar there. Uh, But uh, then again, Jesus is important to the Muslims too, and they don't believe in his death and resurrection. They don't believe he's part of the Godhead. Well, what about the Mormons? They they don't exactly believe. They believe Jesus is part of the Godhead too, but they're more like polytheists. Uh, The Father and the Son and the Spirit are separate gods. Well, what does that say? I mean, does that mean they're not Christians? Are they more like the Muslims, members of a different religion that just also have a use for Jesus? No, it seems like it's closer than that. But then that's what the ideal type is for. It just enables you to uh, plot on the graph where a particular phenomena belongs. 
the Unification Church of Reverend Moon, who sadly passed away lately, another great uh, person that uh, kicked the bucket. Uh, yes, I would say that about, that about Reverend Moon and Joseph Smith. Um, uh, the, the, what about uh, that? Well, uh, you can say the, the the Moonies, the Unificationists, are even further from the standard brand ideal type of Christianity, and yet they have so much in there, uh, Chris, traditional Christianity in there. What are you going to make of it? Well, it just means that uh, you, on the graph, the Unificationists are at a bit further removed from the traditional Christian ideal type than the Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. Uh, and uh, I'd say the Jehovah's Witnesses are about as far, though in a different direction, than the uh, Muslims are. So it, it, it what it kind of means is you can't really say re- uh, readily who is a true versus a nominal Christian. It's It implies criteria that are not shared by all those in the sample. Uh, finally, I, I know it, uh, one of my professors at Gordon-Conwell, great uh, J. Ramsey Michaels, said uh, within evangelicalism there's the same sort of a dispute. Who's a real evangelical? And Michaels says, well, the only rule of thumb you can apply is if somebody considers themselves an evangelical, they are. Same thing if somebody as liberal as Harry Emerson Fosdick says he's a Christian, I guess he's a Christian. As Karl Barth said of Schleiermacher, the the father of liberal theology, he too is a Christian, though he really didn't like a lot of what uh, Schleiermacher said, or as another great venerated teacher of mine, Robert Streetman, the the Swami Streetmananda, used to say, Schleiermacher, uh, he he was a Christian too, uh, and uh, I don't know. It's is it all or nothing? I mean, the the some will say, well, like. Um, Michaels and Carl Barton, these guys are saying, yeah, it's all whoever claims the title. I guess they are. I guess we have to grant them that. But some would go in the other direction and say, none. It's all or nothing. I pick nothing. Like when um, Karen King at Harvard says, eh, there's really no such thing as Gnosticism. What? Uh, Because all these different groups had differences of opinion. Well, I guess there's no such thing as Protestantism either. Maybe no such thing as Christianity either, if you're going to take that approach. So the all or nothing approach. Were there actual mystery religions, as Helmut Kester says? Because, boy, they all are different. Look, have you forgotten what an ideal type is? Uh, Anyway, um, so uh, that's, uh, I think, the real problem here. Now, the uh, it's a different one, a different issue. If you say, "Well, suppose somebody is an apostate," oh yeah, yeah, I was a Christian, but uh, thank Allah, I'm not anymore. Or thank, I mean, would would some terrorists say, "Hey, uh, Amal, uh, you're you used to be a Christian, a copt, right? Uh, but uh, you you converted to Islam." Oh, that's right, brother. Uh, well, okay, they're not a Christian anymore. Uh, does does the certainly they wouldn't say? Well, I know you're a, you claim to be a Muslim now, but you used to be a Christian. So, get ready, here comes the bullet with your name on it. They never do that. Uh, and so, why would someone who is now an atheist but used to be a Christian be a proper target of their wrath because they they want to attack a Christian? Of course, it might be more. Uh, happy to kill an atheist who knows but uh, th- that I'd, I wouldn't think would be enough of a taint if you said look I am not a believer you may not like that any better but don't classify me with them uh, you know the they, Muslims ought to understand the same thing they don't want to be categorized with people with whom they disagree either uh, very interesting little parable there Wim appreciate that